Hello friends, this is Utkarsh Upadhyay and I will be, I will be, I am, and I am your course instructor for electronic devices and circuits. In this, I will be discussing everything related to electronic devices and hopefully this will be very helpful to you to prepare for GATE 2019 examination. Let me start with a basic overview of the whole subject. The average marks weightage of the subject in GATE 2000, uh, GATE examination is 7 marks. So you can expect seven to ten marks of question, six to seven, six to ten marks of questions in the gate examination in the gate 2019 as well. So in this subject, I will first cover the basic concepts of the basic concepts related to semiconductors and uh, etc. Then we move on to the types of semiconductor, doping types, uniform doping, non-uniform doping, Hall experiment. What is the Hall experiment? We will deeply discuss about that. Fermi direct fu Fermi direct function. What is the usage of Fermi Dirac and where, what are the applications of it? Illumination and minority carrier injection, diodes along with explanation, elucidations, biasing and types, BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, FETs, field effect transistors like PMOS, CMOS and uh, NMOS. I would suggest you to go through the solved examples of Neiman textbook. This would be very much helpful for your prepare for the preparation. After reading the theory and after going through, uh, going through the lectures, I, I advise you to solve the examples of Neiman textbook because that would be very, very helpful for you. Okay, let me start with this. Okay, let me start with this. First, let's discuss about temperature. So, absolute temperature. These are some terminologies that you have to, that you need to know and that you should know. We have then room temperature. Room temperature is 300 Kelvin or 27 degrees Celsius. Then we have ambient temperature. Ambient temperature Ta, we know it by Ta. This is 290 Kelvin is equal to 17 degree Celsius. So these are terminologies that you should know. Okay. Now, no semiconductor, no semiconductor can be operated, operated at zero Kelvin. There are some points that you should know. No semiconductor can be operated at zero Kelvin. They have it. Uh, they must be uh, some other. They, it must be some other temperature for the semiconductors to work in. So the proportion, the proportion of semiconductor devices will be maximum, maximum or applicable. applicable at 27 degrees Celsius, 300 Kelvin. So if you ever encounter any question which states at which, uh, which circles around the room temperature, by default you have to consider 27 degrees Celsius. If nothing is mentioned, you have to take the temperature as 300 Kelvin in the question. Okay. Ambient, ambient temperature is superficial superficial temperature and all communication systems and all communication systems work at this temperature okay Now let's discuss about volt equivalent volt equivalent of temperature is also known as thermal voltage noted by Vt. We just change the color pen, color of the ink. That would be 
so that it would be legible and credible to you to understand. Okay, this is represented by Vt, which is equal to k bar t by q volts. Your thermal voltage is denoted by Vt and this is equal to k bar t by q, where k bar is Boltzmann constant, Boltzmann constant, T is temperature in Kelvin and Q is the charge of an electron. Your Boltzmann constant K bar is 1.381 into 10 to the power minus 23 joules per Kelvin. You should know this value and it is also not that much important but if you this if you keep this thing in mind it would be very very helpful for you by substituting the values of uh, k bar the, the values of k bar and q we get the simplified expression of vt as for any temperature it is equal to 11600 volts you can use it anytime you want if you are required to find out the voltage at any temperature, then you can use this thing, use this equation directly. For example, and from here we can, we can, from here we can say, Vt is directly proportional to temperature. Vt is directly proportional to temperature. So it is worth to note down that if T is equal to zero Kelvin, then Vt is equal to zero volts. And if T is equal to 300 Kelvin, your Vt will be equal to 300 by 11600 is equal to 0 0.025568 volts or 26 millivolt nearly. In some cases, in some questions, you might use Vt as 25 millivolt. And you should keep this thing in mind that this is only at temperature 300 Kelvin. Standard, uh, if, if uh, nothing is mentioned in the question, like if, it, if, the, if, if you believe that the question involves the usage of Vt and if the temperature is not mentioned, you have to by default consider Vt as 26 millivolt. By default, by default, Vt is taken as 26 millivolt and temperature is taken as 300 Kelvin by default. Okay. It is worth noting that for a large variation, variation in temperature, we get a minute, we get a minute variation, we get a minute variation in thermal voltage because of the larger denominator okay let's discuss about Boltzmann constant so it is very much it is not that important but you should keep this thing in mind because uh, this would be helpful to you you have two types of Boltzmann constant representations K bar, which is 1.381, 1.381 into 10 to the power minus 23 joules per Kelvin. This is the first value of K bar. Another is K. K is 8.62 into 10 to the power minus 5 electron volt per Kelvin. This is in electron volt per Kelvin. Okay. We can note that uh, K bar is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 into K. Okay. This is important to note down that K bar is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 into K. So we can say that Vt is K bar T by Q is equal to Kt. 
this will these two will result k bar t by q and kt will result into the same value which is 25 millivolt at t is equal to 300 kelvin they are numerically equal but by definition they are not equal because of the dimensions the dimensions are not equal just a way that dollar 1 is rupees 68 they are numeric they are basically equal but by definition they are not because it's dollar and this is rupees okay let's let's go to the next topic which is let's now discuss some other some other terminology which are used here electron volt ev electron volt or ev so what is an electron volt let's discuss about that electron volt is a unit of energy in electronics just simple as simple as that uh, it simply we can define it as electron volt it is the unit of unit of energy in electronics is unit of energy in electronics is an electron volt it's a subunit of 1 joule it's a subunit of 1 joule one electron volt is defined as the energy energy gained by the electron by the electron in moving through in moving through a potential difference of a potential difference of 1 volt so it is a basically one electron is the energy gained by the electron in moving through a potential difference of 1 volt let me explain you with the help of an example let me explain you with the help of an example let's consider this is a capacitor consider a capacitor 1 volt is applied across this thing this is a positive terminal this is a negative terminal let me just change the color so that it will be more legible to you so this plate is uh, positively charged this plate is negatively charged consider this is an electron this is moving in this direction so just consider this particular portion so this is one volt so one volt is applied across this capacitor so the energy gained by the electron is defined as one electron volt so from here we can define one electron volt as magnitude of charge into potential difference potential difference q into v q is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs into 1 volt which is equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 cv which is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules so one electron volt is defined as 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joules electron volt is the kinetic energy gained is the kinetic energy gained by the electron by the electron or potential energy lost potential energy lost by it so kinetic energy is half m v square and so this is the kinetic energy which is equal to half m v square and potential energy potential energy is q into v so by applying the law of conservation of energy kinetic energy gained is equal to potential energy lost so we can say that half mv square is equal to q into v so we can get the velocity of electron as 2 q v by m this is in meters per second your m is basically the rest mass of an electron rest mass of electron 
which is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. Let's move on to the next topic of discussion. Let me just change the ink color. So, we study about electric electric field intensity denoted by E or capital E. So, let's discuss about that. It is the ink color green. Okay, so by the electric field is defined as minus dv by dx. This is how we define the electric field intensity. Electric field intensity is directed is, is directed in that direction where the potential decreases with the maximum rate. From the electromagnetic theory, we have seen that electric field is minus del V. Electric field is gradient of the potential. Potential is a scalar. Potential is scalar. Minus del V is a vector. Electric field is minus del V. It is in this it is directed in the direction where the potential decreases with the maximum rate. So field intensity is always directed from the positive of the battery to the negative of the battery or from the higher potential to the lower potential. So electric field is directed, directed from plus to minus or high potential to low potential. Higher potential to lower potential. Let me give you an example of a material. Okay. Example, consider this as a material and this as the voltage applied. This is plus, this is minus. Voltage applied. Now, electric field will be in this direction. This is the direction of the electric field intensity. Current flow will be in this direction. Holes always, so electrons will always move in the direction opposite to that of the electric field intensity the movement of holes the movement of holes is always accompanied with the direction of the electric field intensity so this is how it looks so we can define the magnitude of electric field intensity as magnitude of voltage upon spacing okay we just change the ink color. So, so let us see an example. Consider, consider a semiconductor having uniform dimensions. So, we draw the semiconductor with the uniform dimensions. The positive terminal is here. This is 1 volt. This is x is equal to 0 millimeter. This is x is equal to 1 millimeter. Suppose you are asked to find out the electric field intensity as 0.5 millimeter or and uh, 1 millimeter. So, how would you calculate? Since this is basically a uniform, uniform semiconductor it's a uniform semiconductor so this can be seen as the variation in the electric field intensity so we can see that the electric since the, the semiconductor is uniform electric field intensity varies linearly with the distance so this is 0 millimeter this is 0.5 millimeter let's say this is uh, b this is a so this point is a Let's say this is, uh, sorry, this is C, this is B. This is 0.5 millimeter, this is 1 millimeter. So, since it, it is, since the electric field, since the, it is a uniform semiconductor, electric field intensity varies linearly with the distance. So, we can say the electric field intensity, the voltage here is 0 volt. This is 0.5 volts, this is 1 volt. So, we can say electric field intensity at B is VB upon XB magnitude is equal to 1 volt upon 
वन इंटू टेन पावर माइनस थ्री मीटर इज टेन टू पावर थ्री वोल्ट पर मीटर एंड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी एट पॉइंट सी इज इक्वल टू इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी एट पॉइंट सी इज इक्वल टू वी सी अपॉन एक्स सी इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट फाइव वोल्ट अपॉन पॉइंट फाइव इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस थ्री मीटर टेन टू पावर थ्री वोल्ट पर मीटर सो फ्रॉम हेयर वी कैन सी दट इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी एट द पॉइंट बी एंड पॉइंट सी आर द सेम सो फ्रॉम हेयर वी कैन कंक्लूड दट द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी इन साइड अ यूनिफॉर्म इन साइड अ यूनिफॉर्म सेमी कंडक्टर इज कॉन्स्टेंट थ्रू आउट सो यू मस्ट सो आई मस्ट राइट दिस पॉइंट दैट इन अ यूनिफॉर्म इन अ यूनिफॉर्म सेमी कंडक्टर इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज कॉन्स्टेंट थ्रू आउट ओके दिस इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट ओके नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट एनर्जी बैंड गैप्स विच इज ऑल्सो डिनोटेड बाय ई जी ओके so if we consider the band diagram of a semiconductor this is known as a conduction band this is known as a valence band okay this portion is referred to as energy band gap or forbidden zone forbidden zone or energy band gap eg let me just describe you the energy band gaps of germanium and silicon at t is equal to 0 kelvin and at t is equal to 300 kelvin these two values are important and if you want you can keep this thing in your mind so this is eg0 and this is eg300 so this is at 0 kelvin and this is at 300 kelvin this is for germanium this is for silicon for germanium it is 0.785 electron volt and this is 1.21 electron volt for germanium eg0 is 0.785 electron volt and 1.21 electron volt for silicon at 300 kelvin it is 0.72 electron volt for germanium and 1.1 electron volt for silicon so there is a decrease in the energy band gap with increase in temperature so from here we can extract the relation that is inversely proportional to the temperature so eg decreases with increase in temperature it is also governed by an equation which is equal to egt is equal to eg0 minus beta not t eg0 minus beta not t where beta not is a material constant material constant whose units are electron volt per kelvin so from here we can see that for germanium eg of t energy band gap at any temperature is 0.785 minus 2.33 into 10 to the power minus 4 into temperature t and for silicon eg of t it is 1.21 minus 3 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 into t so beta not for germanium is 2.33 into 10 to the power minus 4 and beta not for silicon is 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 so let's move on to the, the another topic of discussion let me just change the ink color now let's move on to the classification of classification of elements so so we can classify the elements as metals or conductors 
second one is insulators and third one is semiconductors now let's discuss about semiconductors what are these so a semiconductor are the elements whose conductivity lies in between the conductivity of an insulator and conductivity of a metal semiconductor metal conductor so this is important to note that semiconductors conductivity semiconductors conductivity lies in between in between to those of an insulator and conductor okay septavalent septavalent or seventh group elements and octavalents which are the eighth group elements are insulators septavalent and octavalent elements are insulator okay fourth group fourth group elements are semiconductors fourth group elements are semiconductors it is worth to note down that at 0 kelvin semiconductors behave as insulators from here from the first statement we can say we can say that the energy band gap of semiconductors are greater than to those of insulators okay semiconductors are bipolar because of the presence of both minority as well as majority charge carriers they exhibit exhibit covalent bonding they exhibit covalent bonding energy band gaps eg small energy band gaps hote hain small energy band gaps eg and which is basically basically below 1.5 electron volt okay uh i think i wrongly said that uh, the energy band gap energy band gap of semiconductors are greater than that of insulators it's wrong the insulators have greater energy band gap than those of semiconductors please correct the statement the energy band gap of semiconductors are less than those of the energy band gap of insulators i'm sorry for that please make a correction eg of eg energy band gap decreases with increase in temperature okay semiconductors have ntc of resistance which means that resistance decreases with increase in temperature diffusion current flows and the examples for semiconductors are germanium silicon gallium arsenide gallium arsenide is basically a compound type semiconductor and germanium and silicon are element type semiconductor now let's see the properties of insulators the properties of insulators so they are bad conductors of current they are bad conductors of current seventh and eighth group elements are insulators septavalent and octavalent elements 
they unlike uh, unlike two semiconductors insulators exhibit ionic bonding they exhibit ionic bonding eg is very large greater than or equal to 5 electron volt energy band gap of insulators are very large and this is basically greater than or equal to 5 electron volt so that's why the conductivity is very 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 less insulators have anti c of resistance they have anti c of resistance which means that resistance decreases with increase in temperature conductivity negligible conductivity is negligible for example sio2 silicon dioxide air paper ceramic ceramics cotton bakelite etc let's discuss let's discuss about conductors or metals so conductors are very good conductors of current metals are good conductors of current conducting conductivity is very large conductivity is very very large as compared to semiconductor and insulators they exhibit they exhibit metallic bonding they exhibit metallic bonding unlikely uh, unlike to the covalent bonding in semiconductors and ionic bonding in insulators they are unipolar because of the presence of only only majority charge carriers majority charge carriers the concentration of majority charge carriers is nearly negligible current is carried out by electrons only the current is solely carried out by electrons okay if we see the energy band energy band gap energy band gap at 0 kelvin it looks something like this both conduction band and valence band touch each other at the interface at 0 kelvin this is the diagram eg is basically equal to 0 electron volt at 0 kelvin if we increase the temperature to t is equal to 300 kelvin eg is not equal to 0 and the energy band diagram looks something like this let me just change the color so that it is legible to you and easy for you to understand to distinguish between the two so this portion this thing this portion is conduction band and you just highlight this thing okay and this one is valence band both conduction and valence band overlap each other both conduction band and valence band overlap in uh, overlap each other at the temperatures greater than 0 kelvin okay it must be clear to you so there is a basic base, uh, very subtle difference between the metals ins insulators and semiconductors and the energy band diagram of metal at 0 0 kelvin an energy band diagram of metal at 300 kelvin there are some more points to consider as temperature increases conduction and valence band start overlapping this is you have already seen 
the metals possess ptc of resistance ptc of resistance which means that resistance increases with increase in temperature resistance increases with increase in temperature in this only drift current flows only drift current flows there is no diffusion current because of the majority charge carriers some examples of metals like are like for example copper aluminum argentum which is silver platinum etc so that's all for this part of the lecture so in the next lecture we will discussing about different type of semiconductors and what are the type of dopings so far so good go through the lecture once again and try to understand each and every point that i have explained in this lecture and uh, try to solve try to uh, do not get confused just go through the concept that i have just told that's all for today thank you very much